Hi, I'm Craig, and in this video I want to show you how to quickly and more importantly accurately scribe uneven surfaces like a brick wall or even a stone wall where you're going to make trim up to it. It used to be you'd eye it and take measurements and again draw pictures and so forth, but this is, this is a super easy way. You're going to love it. And you know me, I want you to keep your money in your pocket. So the tool you need is just a wooden dowel about three-eighths of an inch in diameter or like a number two pencil size dowel and a pencil and some electrical tape. And here's how you put the two together. Okay, so you can see that I've whittled this to a point, but more importantly, I've whittled it off to one side so it's not in the center. See how it's off to the side like that? In other words, it's not like I, I shoved it into a pencil sharpener. And the reason I did that is so that when I attach the pencil to it, the distance is further apart. And you can adjust that distance by rolling it around or even by rolling your pencil out like that. Or you could even space between it with an object if you needed a much larger gap. For example, if you were doing a stone wall where the gaps were more like an inch to an inch and a half, you may want to space it out. But in this case, I'm just doing a, uh, a brick wall. I'm scribing a brick wall. So this should be more than enough, about a half to nine sixteenths of a gap. So you take the pencil, the carpenter's pencil, and the dowel, and you just tape it to each other. Just like that. And then here's how we put it to use. Here are some examples of an exposed brick wall being used to accent a room and this is how you would trim it out to fill up those gaps and irregularities. As you can see here it, it, it can go anywhere from a quarter to three-eighths to even a half of an inch in, in gap. So we take our tool and what's important to note is you want to keep it perpendicular to the wood that you're drawing on so that you're transferring the mark directly from the brick or the, the irregular surface to the wood that you're going to be cutting. And you don't want to let the pencil lead ahead of the scribe. You want to keep them at right angles also to the irregular surface or the brick in this case. So as you can see that scribe is following the brick and the pencil is directly across from it. It's not leading or going ahead of it which would give an inaccurate mark. Now here's a little trick I like to do which makes your job a little bit easier and your results that much more accurate is put your blade on a 45 and cut it on the table saw before you actually scroll cut it with the jigsaw. This thins out the material and it makes it less likely that you'll break a blade when you are scroll cutting it and it also lets that leading edge touch first when you're fitting it up against the irregular surface before the back edge would hit. So it's, it's more likely to fit more accurately the first time around. Now you want to use a scroll blade in your jigsaw, which is about half, maybe a little bit less uh, in thickness than uh, a normal blade. And if your jigsaw has an oscillation adjustment, which is not the up and down, the reciprocation, but it's the oscillation, you want to put it on zero. Okay, now here's where the rubber meets the road. You can make the most accurate mark in the world, but if you're not going to follow it, you're not going to get the results. So take your time. Keep the saw pressed tightly against the wood, the base, so that it's not jumping around on you. Make your turns nice and slowly. Keep the blade at full speed at all times. You can control the forward speed by pushing the tool forward or backing off on that, but you don't want to let up and and, and go slow with the blade if you have a variable speed trigger. Some don't. It's either on or it's not. Now you remember when we cut the 45 before we actually scroll cut it, some of that gets cut off with the deeper cuts. So you can adjust your jigsaw, if it has this adjustment, and go ahead and, and, and cut that 45 again where we lost it. This just helps it mate up against the wall nice and tightly. Now here you go, there's your end result. A nice tight fitting piece of trim. It makes a nice little conversation piece to your trim package. I think you'll find this to be one of the more gratifying or satisfying tricks that I'll teach you. It's, it's easy, it's accurate, and you can see the results. They're just 
wonderful. And we use the same technique to do the horizontal sill as well, just to finish this out. And there you go. How about that? Wasn't that easy? I mean, more than easy, it was accurate. You got it right the first time. You're following your material step by step. And as long as you take your time and do it right, maybe do a couple practice pieces, I know you'll get it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Your comments are always welcome. Thanks again for watching. I'm Craig. Have a great time doing your DIY projects.